so another long and informative morning, um, but I don't know about you guys, after a couple of hours, despite how good the content is, your attention kind of starts to wane, right? So it, it starts to wonder. Thankfully, uh, my coworker built a perfect app just for such an occasion, which I want to show you guys. Let me just make this bigger. Whoops. Okay. So we have my phone right here. It's kind of hard to read, but I have this app. It's called The Air Horner. Perfect. In case of emergency, break glass. Uh, perfect app for every meeting. And I know what you're thinking. How do I get this thing? All right. And it's an invite only thing right now. No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so I've hopefully convinced you or sold you on this idea of the Air Horner app, right? So how do you get it? Well, you load the store. You click a few things. There you go. You load the store. You search for the Air Horner. And... This is where I pray that you actually find my app, not one of the other 50 Airhorn apps, which I'm sad to say I'm not the first one to come up with this idea. Then you click install. You have to accept some permissions. Uh, you have to wait for this thing to download. And then you actually can you know, get the ultimate experience of using the Airhorn. But there's one problem here. Um, if you've played this game before, you'll know that each step that you add in the install process actually uh, contributes a lot to the user attrition. So we have some good data uh, that shows that each step that you add loses approximately 20% of your users. So if I convinced about a 1,000 of you to even like consider installing this app, by the time you make it to the end of this install process, I'm, I may have maybe like a third of you, which is not great, right? And at the same time, this is nothing new. Some, for somebody who's in e-commerce, these numbers will be very familiar because you'll know that if you add more steps to the checkout process, you're going to see the same kind of results. So can we do better? And my claim is that we can, because you can actually just go to airhorner.com, and all of a sudden, you have instant gratification. There is no permissions, no nothing to install, nothing to accept. You just open this up, and you get to enjoy this beautiful experience of the airhorn in your browser. Except if we just stop there, and I would claim that this is a much better experience than the native app, uh, you know, that, that's kind of a short talk and not very compelling, because as you know, once you have that app, you actually have a better re-engagement model with the user. It lives on the home screen. It can work offline. You can push notifications, although I'm not sure what notifications would do for an air horn. That sounds dangerous. <laughs> I'm hearing it. I'm hearing it. <laughs> All right. So, you know, I wonder what happens if everybody in the room does it at the end. Yeah? Let's try it. OK. So moving along. So we can actually do this on the web. This is progressive apps or progressive web apps. And uh, what is Progressive Web App? Well, it's an app. It's, it's a web page, first of all, that upgrades its capabilities. So you load the URL. You get the instant gratification. You can accept permissions. You can ask for permissions, just as you would with any of the existing APIs, like if you want camera access. But then in the background, we can actually install the app and remove and kind of reverse that install process, such that the user doesn't have to take all that friction up front uh, to get the app installed. I'm hearing it again. Perfect. <laughs> So compare this to our original process of uh, loading in the App Store, and all of a sudden you can see that we've inverted this entire install process, which is a much, much better user experience. So how do we do this? Uh, well, it all starts with Service Worker, which is a new functionality that we're building in, in Chrome and in Firefox. And it allows you to run a separate worker. It's a separate thread, effectively, a web worker, uh, in the background that's independent of the renderer. And the way this works is when you come to a page like the Airhorner page, it actually checks if Service Worker is supported and then starts this registration process in the background. And the important part here is that this is completely asynchronous. The user is not blocked on this. There's no prompts. You're interacting with the page. You're doing what you're doing. And in the background, this thing is uh, registering itself. Once we fetch this thing, we actually send an event to your code, which is your service worker, that says, hey, uh, we would like to, for you to install yourself, whatever that means. And in this case, we actually give you a cache API where you can manage your own caches. And you can say, well, in order for me to function offline or in other contexts, I actually need four files. This is a pretty simple app. I need the index file, the CSS, the JavaScript, and the actual MP3 to play. Uh, pretty darn simple. And in the background, what this will do is it will actually go out and fetch these files and cache them locally. And you manage that, that cache yourself. So now you have this package on your device, and you've scripted this install. Right? This is very interesting, because it's not like some uh, new package format that you have to download. You can download these assets from anywhere you like. OK, so if you've installed yourself, next, 
once this is enabled, when the user navigates back to your page, the service worker becomes active. And it actually enables a whole set of new capabilities in that web app. So for example, now every network request that is made by the web page is mediated by this worker. So we actually send fetch events to the worker anytime we try to fetch uh, a request. And you can inspect what's the URL, what's the method, what are the headers, what are you trying to fetch? And you can respond to that. So just as an example, you can actually create your own synthetic response and respond with arbitrary data. Uh, in this case, I'm hijacking every single fetch and responding with a uh, text string, which is a terrible idea, but it kind of gives you a flavor for the kinds of things that you can do, right? So you can actually uh, return the cached entry or uh, synthesize your own. Um, here's a, a slightly more complicated but interesting example. We cached a few things when we ran the on install. So first, we're going to check if we have the request in our local cache. If we do, we will return it. If not, we'll just forward it to the network. So this little snippet is effectively what makes you offline friendly, because once you have this stuff installed, it checks the local cache, and everyone's happy. So this is really, really nice. Now, let's go a step further, right? So we've, we've actually taken this app, we've taken it offline, but how do we add ourselves to the home screen? Well, there's another component called the manifest, uh, the manifest spec, uh, which you need the service worker and manifest. And when you declare this, you basically just describe what's the name of the app, uh, how do you want it displayed, what is the background, and with that in place, once you navigate to, uh, to our app a few times, as you can see the prompt here, it'll prompt the user, hey, would you like to add this thing to the home screen? Because we know it has service worker, it's offline friendly, and you've given us these nice icons. So let's just add it, and then it just lives on your home screen like any other app, and it's completely indistinguishable from any other app. You have no idea, the user has no idea what technology is powering it, except as developers, we know that this is all web technology, which we uh, love and use. Further, uh, we can leverage all of the existing web technologies, things like permissions and uh, notifications and audio and video and all the rest. And we can ask for these things on demand. Instead of prompting the user up front with that long list of 50 things that you need to accept in order to use this app, you can actually enable these features and ask for permission when you need them, which is, has shown to be a much more effective way to get user engagement and user opt-in rates. Because you're in the context, you know that you're enabling push notifications you know why you're accepting the permissions, right? So this is just a much better experience. So this is kind of cool. Let's say we've actually added push notifications, um, but then the user actually closes the app, right? And it's sitting in my pocket, and you want to send a push notification. How does that work? You can't really do that on the web today. Well, with Service Worker, recall that th this worker lives independent of the actual renderer, which means that we can actually wake it up to push a notification to it. So the way this works is you would use, just like, let's say, with Android app or iOS app, your server would uh, push a notification to the Google Cloud Messaging server or the iOS server. That server then wakes up Chrome, which runs on the device. And Chrome would wake up your worker and say, hey, I have a notification that was queued from somewhere. What do you want to do with it? So in this case, you can actually display the notification just like any other native notification uh, in your, um, on your phone. Further. Once the user clicks on the notification, you get another event in the service worker that says, hey, the user has clicked on this damn thing. What do you like to do? Uh, would you like to open the app? Would you like to navigate away? Would you like to just invoke some action in your app and just go back into the background? So all of this work uh, is happening in the background, completely independent of the app being open. And I'm hoping this is starting to give you a flavor for the kinds of things that you can actually do with the web today. So the short takeaway here is progressive web apps are just apps. Right? They use the same web technologies that we love and we use today, uh, but they give you a set of new capabilities, much richer capabilities that allow you to take that experience out of the tab and onto a standalone, offline-friendly uh, experience uh, that is much, much better that you can offer today. So if you'd like to learn more, uh, please uh, check out the slides there for the service worker talk that uh, we had yesterday. And I'm curious to see. How many people have the Air Horner app open? Come on. <laughs> All right. Thank you.